Now, our next guests come right from one of our local showcase schools here in the Washington area, Renton Prep, where their goal is to inspire and passion for harnessing and engaging technology for teaching and learning, critical thinking, and sharing the hope of becoming responsible and productive citizens whose legacy will leave the world in a truly better place. We've got an amazing educator and students joining us, so please welcome Eric Hood, along with two students, Willella Solomon and Leah Matthew, to share how they've been using rich multimedia tools to inspire creativity and curiosity. Please join me in welcoming Eric, Willella, and Layla. Thanks, Eric. Willella, good to see you. Thank you. All right, so Willella and Leah will be joining us soon. So we're going to talk about a little bit behind Remix in the classroom. So if y'all would, go over there. Remix in the classroom. I stand on the shoulders of giants when it comes to Remix in the classroom. Researchers like Lawrence Lessig have been talking about Remix for years. And in fact, Kirby Ferguson has been talking about it in video form for a while. In fact, he summarizes it very simply as copy, transform, and combine. Those are the three elements to creativity. And students already know about this. They do this when they take a Snapchat video or create YouTube videos. They take existing media and they combine it with media that they've had interest in and start to think about ways that they can make it even better. They take these things and they make new elements to creativity. In our classroom, we had a project about the Cage Bird Video Remix Project in which they got to learn about the life of Dr. Maya Angelou and about how her life has been impacted by poetry and the situations that she faced. So they got to read the poem called Caged Bird. And in addition, they got to, re, uh, got to go see the uh, movie called And Still I Rise, which is a documentary about her life. And then to add everything onto this, they got to actually see a play in Seattle about, uh, about her life. I know why the caged bird sings. And the project's goal was for them to combine video, audio, images, even their own voice to talk about video remix. And again, video remix goes back to the simple elements, copy, transform, and combine. And in order to do this, you actually need tools to help them think about their storyboard process, to think about brainstorming, researching, gathering media, and combining those. Emmy Sung is probably one of the fantastic artist in my class. And she went above and beyond, exemplary in fact, in creating a storyboard in which she combined her love of Disney films and the princess stories about losing freedom, losing voice, to actually combine it with the same story and the stanzas within Cage Bird's poem. And it's this idea of that you're actually taking things that you're actually interested in into things that are uh, out there in the public domain and that we're able to get students to think that you can build upon the works of others. Alistair, who's an aspiring musician, and he would hate me if I didn't shout out his SoundCloud, so find him on SoundCloud at Alistair with a Q. <laughs> and he used Sway to reflect on his audio process about how he uh, chose the song that went underneath the video behind it. And so we're just gonna watch a short clip from that and see how he talks about it. Can seldom see through his bars of rage, his wings are clipped, and his feet are tied. The song I used was the song Prison Song by Simon Butler. When I first read the Cage Bird poem, I couldn't stop but think of this song. I was thinking of the first verse, which goes, Cold chills, prison cells, locked in bars of steel, leave my woman tonight, just ain't feeling right. Cold chills, prison cells. This song and Cage Bird have many connections, one being the message. Tommy Butler's prison song addresses a racial divide in the world, which is what I thought Cage Bird was about. So I decided to use the song as my background music. The lyrics are uh, very powerful, they connect, and it sounds nice. And that strengthens the idea behind the fact that you can connect songs that you listen to on your free time with academics and in the classroom. Leah, who's actually here today, used Microsoft PowerPoint recording to actually even add more to it, that she actually used her voice to recite the poem and use digital ink to draw um, a symbol of what she thought Cage Bird meant. Cage Bird sings with a fearful chill of things unknown but long for still, and his tune is heard on a distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. And it's this tool of digital inking that is inspiring more ways that we can actually add remix to it, to actually get to write on top of a video. In fact, Microsoft Photos has this new feature within it that you can actually anchor text to people's faces the same way you would do with keyframing and Adobe products. 
And so we experimented with this program and had students express their personality with their name featured on it. And what student doesn't like having their name featured on a video? So, enough for me. I want two of my students that uh, I appreciate so much and I'm so proud of, Willella and Leah, to talk about how not only can you use this cool technology just to show the cool technology, but actually have a social impact behind this. Sustainable development goals are goals to make the world a better place and also better communities. As a WE school, we are trying to do this by creating a local project and a global project. Our global, our global project is trying to give gloves to Ethiopia and India. We are giving gloves to rural hospitals and in order to compile our research we created a OneNote page. In this OneNote page we have our, what our problem is and ways we can um, create a solution. We compiled photos, videos, and also articles showing and supporting our findings. So OneNote is a tool, Microsoft tool, that we use in school almost every day, and we consider it as our digital notebook. And for this presentation, without just by keeping things in our head, it wouldn't work alone. So we use OneNote to brainstorm and compile all our ideas together. So as Walala was mentioning, we included video, inking, text, and articles, so it would be easier to compile and spread awareness for our project that we're doing, which is spreading gloves and giving gloves to rural areas in Africa and India. This project actually started in 2011. I was a young kid at that time and I visited Ethiopia and I didn't, I didn't really notice much, but I always knew that I wanted to make a difference in the world. And so two years ago, I was talking about my mom and I just had that time where I just, I wanted to do something, you know, to make a change. So she said, I told her, can I do something in Ethiopia? Can I give, you know, medical instruments to hospitals that are in need? And she, told, she always tells me that if you start something small, it will create and make a big difference. So that's what I've learned. And I decided, and she helped me decide to start with gloves. So I talked to my teacher, Ms. Zimmerman, and also a couple, of my a couple of students, my classmates, Leah including, and she was telling me and helping me raise awareness the past couple years. But it wasn't until this year when she told us about We Day and help, helped us help me actually make this project start to come to life. And with Leah's help, we created a video to promote our idea and project. So as Mr. Hood was mentioning, Microsoft Photos released a new product where you're able to make slideshows with their photos. And we wanted to give gloves to rural areas and rural hospitals. Um, and we want to spread awareness. So the way we did that was by creating this video where we included digital inking to spread awareness about what we're doing. So the first digital inking that you will see is um, of USA, Africa, and India because those are our main places that we want to reach because both of our families are from there and we've seen the poverty and the need of medical supplies that doctors need to treat patients and we are both also interested in going into the medical field. And the second um, digital inking that you will see is a, a hospital and gloves because that's our main approach to give medical gloves to rural hospitals in Africa and India. So we'll play this video that we made to spread awareness. 
is a Microsoft Showcase goal, as well as a Wii school. This year, we wanted to make a difference in the world. We are doing that by giving out medical gloves to rural areas in Africa and India. We are also trying to encourage all hospitals to use medical gloves effectively while treating patients. If you want to connect to our teacher, Ms. Zimmerman, for more information, use her Twitter handle or her email to directly contact her. Thank you so much for having us and having the showcase so we can partner with We Day and our school to show off these students that are going to be the people that change the world. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Eric, thank you very much for the work that you're doing. It's truly inspiring. A good shout-out also to WE and the work that you're doing with WE. It's really, really great. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.